So the picture's blurry. Um, there is a video on like these first few pages because usually I spend half of the class doing demos because gas laws are really cool demos. Um, so the other thing is on YouTube, I actually finally after a year found the button that's like sitting there right in front of me that reordered them. Um, so when you guys go on the YouTube, it's going to have the newest one first. So you won't have to scroll down and find it, um, which should make your lives a lot easier. I also figured out how to do that on Blackboard. So next week's folder is at the top and the old stuff just drops down. So I just wanted to warn you that I did it. Um, like the first time you'll be like, what did she do? And then you'll realize, oh, that's nice. So if you went on YouTube right now, the thing at the top of the list is the pre-lecture video. I made it in the fall for my other class. Um, and I usually get to play with liquid nitrogen and there was none because nobody works. Um, and so I spent two hours trying to make that 20 minute video because I couldn't get anything cold enough. And yeah. All right. Um, so, you know, it's not mandatory you watch it, but it does help you. I'll, I'm going to go through this now, but it shows examples of everything. And then I review um, walk through the different gas laws that we're going to go through now. So the good news about gas laws is it's algebra. This is the key to gas laws. This is actually all you need to know is PV equals NRT. If you took physics or chemistry in high school, you know PV equals NRT. And if you did not, by the end of this week, by the end of this class, by next Tuesday, uh, doing the study set, um, there's going to be different flavors, variations on it, but gas laws come down to this. So this is algebra, which is good. Algebra is the first math you've really learned. Um, so gas comes, I've talked about this before, it comes from the word chaos um, because they are all about giggles and jiggles or kinetic energy. And so they are always moving around, they're giggling and jiggling. We get a lot of giggles and jiggles this term, which is good because we need a lot of giggles and jiggles. Um, so they are kinetic energy, they are moving always moving, just zipping around all over the place. Uh, and so because they are moving, because they have high kinetic energy, they have very, very weak, very, very. Remember, we repeat, it means really, we're serious here, very, very weak IMFs. In fact, there is an assumption for PV equals NRT to work, you assume there are absolutely no intermolecular forces at all, that they've completely overcome them. That's a huge assumption because there's always a little bit of attraction, but it works good enough for what we're doing. Um, and so that's what makes them special. That's one of the things. That's one of many things. We're going to go through more of what makes them special on Tuesday next week. There's like one of the later pages, um, but they they occupy all the space. Uh, which is what is the big difference between a solid? I mean, a solid is what it is. It's the size. It's not going to occupy the whole room. So if if you have a perfume and you open it up, because that's what you're smelling is the gas, it's going to fill up the whole room. So the key to doing gas laws and doing them well and making it easy, I, I put this as the third state of matter that we went over. Um, by the way, did you guys on your study set? Oh, it's on your worksheet. You have to write your affirmation for your solid, affirmate your earth. Um, so we're on the air element and um, it's all about the variables. So I want to go through this. I go through it on the video, but we'll do it now too. P stands for pressure. So we talked about pressure, we talked about vapor pressure, but this is gases. So it's things that are already gases. It could be something that left the liquid state and became a gas. Then we call it a vapor, but then then you do call it a gas. Um, in one word, what is pressure measuring? You can give two words if you prefer. I did talk about this with vapor pressure. Starts with the C O L L I S. Nobody watched my video because it was a gorgeous day. I didn't watch it either. I went on a hike. Uh, pressure is all about collisions. That's it. It is collisions. We are in chemistry. So we're going to look at it from a chemist's point of view. This is collisions of atoms and molecules. When you do physics, 
you'll look at it from a physics point of view. Where things are colliding, they're all point particles. They have no mass because mass is not real, even though we all think it is. Um, that's, that's quantum mechanics for you. And that's like what we're going to finally figure out apparently very soon. Um, units for pressure is, we have actually saw these on some of the graphs, ATM, which is atmospheres of pressure, um, millimeters of mercury. So again, if the barometer is a whole, a tube of mercury, and that's what this guy, so this is Torricelli, who made the first manometer. And so this is filled with mercury here, and the air pushes on it. And depending on what the pressure of the air is, the mercury moves up this, and you can see it went to this level. Um, so on a perfect day, so standard pressure is one ATM and 760 millimeters of mercury. So these are equal. One ATM is 760 millimeters of mercury. In honor of Torricelli, they renamed the unit. So 760 millimeters of mercury is the same thing as 760 Tor. It's written as the little t. He didn't name it after himself. He had just done so much work with pressure that they made the unit named after him. So you, you know it must be millimeters of mercury. That's how high in millimeters. Um, in this country, we'll say inches of mercury, which I don't even know what it is. Um, but if you're in the hundreds, you're in one of these units. ATMs, this is a perfect day at sea level, um, which was today. Today was like a perfect day. V, anybody know? It's a capital V. It's not a little V, so it is not velocity. Volume. volume. It is volume. Um, which is going to be liters typically, but it could also be milliliters, which is the same as what unit? A milliliter is the same as what unit? One centimeter cubed. Centimeter. Uh, centimeter cubed. Yeah. All right. Um, what is volume measuring? You never thought about that, right? You just know what volume is. How about in one word, what is volume measuring? Space. There you go. You guys could do it in one word. It is space. Um, so it's how much space occupied by the gas. So it's not the size of the gas particle. It's the space occupied by the gas. Um, there is an assumption that is made, and I talk about this on Tuesday, and the assumption is that the size of the particle doesn't take up any space. It's the size of an atom is so small, we ignore it. Um, but that's like an assumption that has to be made for this to work, that all the space in this room is empty, um, which isn't quite true. And so the gas is everywhere. All right, my room's a mess, so. Uh, capital T stands for? Temperature. Well, no, temperature and what is temperature in like one or two words? Anybody? The heat? Not quite. It is on the side. There is the idea of heat, but it is giggles and jiggles. It is kinetic energy. Or if you prefer, which I do, it's the giggles. It is the movement, the giggles and jiggles. Um, you can Google what the difference between temperature and heat is. There is only one unit of measurement, and that is Kelvin. This is important. So zero Kelvin is absolute zero. So standard temperature is not zero. Um, so standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So we measure with a the thermometer in Celsius and then we convert to Kelvin. Does anybody know what the number is to convert? Isn't it like 273? Plus it 40. is 273, yes. I don't know why. I'm just writing random names up on the board. Um, 
So you you would take the Celsius and you add 273, and that will give you uh, 273 Kelvin. So that's standard temperature, as well as up here we talked about standard pressure. Um, it only does anybody know why it only works in Kelvin? It it only works in Kelvin because Kelvin, when he made his temperature scale. He took, he thought about the idea of movement. Um, so Celsius is based off of water's freezing point and boiling point, but um, the Kelvin scale, he said absolute zero is when all movement stops. There's no movement. There's no jiggles and giggles of any kind. So even in my perfect crystal that I wear, there are giggles and jiggles. There's like a little bit of giggling and jiggling. Mine has a lot. Um, and so zero Kelvin's where it stops. So zero Kelvin is hypothetical. They have gotten really close. When you get really close, like below one Kelvin, I think, uh, atoms do not behave the way we see them here. How, um, they behave totally different. And that was something called the Bose-Einstein effect. Uh, so B-O-H-S. So Bose was an Indian, like brilliant man. Um, so everybody in India knows him. He actually did a lot of stuff of paranormal, like measuring that Plants are giving off energy and stuff like that uh, and made devices with that. But he came up with this idea and Einstein showed that, yeah, he's right. And there's a lot of research that's done with it. They have also gone to negative Kelvin. Um, I don't know what really happens there. We're not going to see negative Kelvin temperatures. Um, and so zero Kelvin, though, nobody's been able to get because you can't. You can't have no movement. All right. And we are in chemistry. This is the chemist's favorite unit, little n, not capital N, which is Avogadro's number. What is little n? It's, it's a critter running around my meditation garden and aerating it really nicely for me these days. Every time I go out to meditate, there's another molehill. And I just giggle because I'm like, well, it's perfect. I'm a chemistry teacher and now I have a pet mole. Um, he must have hit a rock because he changed directions, but now he didn't find any worms. Did you guys know that? I just learned that. That's why moles make holes. So that's where the mole hills come from is they're looking for a worm. And I have lots of worms out there. So he's very happy and content and making lots of hills. Um, so it's a mole. And what is a mole measuring? That's, that's good because you're all like pondering. It's it's telling you how many particles there are. So um, number of particles, meaning atoms or molecules. So if we're talking about the noble gases like neon, we would say atoms. If we're talking about carbon dioxide, we would say molecules. So in physics, you do, gas laws are law. Um, so I was listening to a talk and and physics is getting ready to explode. They're finding we're breaking a lot of things, but these are like the primer. This is like our ABCs. So these are laws. Um, and it's not that they can't be broken. It's that they're just the basics and they are they can be expanded on. And as soon as people realize that, that's when the fun stuff happens starts happening. It's so the same like Newton's laws. They are laws and there are basics to get us started, but they're not a limit. It doesn't mean things can't happen. So STP we talked about up there. Um, all right, this is just history. So Torricelli was actually a disciple of Galileo, like you guys are my disciples. I can be that arrogant to have disciples, but um, anyway, he was the guy who worked with pressure. And then there was this guy whose name I can't say uh, but he did a thing with the vacuum where if you suck all the air out you, you have these two balls and I don't know how he did it but he's able to pull all the air out and he put a candle inside and the candle of course would go out he also did something terrible which was he put rover inside and rover then had no air in there because it was a vacuum and rover didn't make it um, but then this, this picture is an experiment he did. So these were two big balls and put them together. And if you suck all the air out, there's nothing inside pushing. There's the air pressure from the outside pushing on it. And so they hooked it up to two horses and the two horses could not pull it apart. 
um, they have an example of this in the physics lab. They have small ones and you just hook it up to a, a machine that sucks out the air inside. And so if there's nothing inside pushing, so space, since there's so much empty space in space, it's a vacuum. Um, and so this is this is what a vacuum is, is you're, you have, there's no particles. And so there's no collisions. Or like you get vacuums down to really, really low numbers like micro something. And, and that's that you're pulling out all the particles. So there's no particles, there's no collisions. So you have an extremely, you would have, if there were truly no particles. Um, so what happens in space is, since there's no particles on the outside, there's no pressure. And so on the inside of the spaceship, there is pressure because there's air, right? So they're breathing. And so when they open the door, the air from in the spaceship will push the people out. And so that's a thing they show in all the movies that the people get, they're getting sucked out. It's not that they're getting sucked out. They're getting pushed out by the air pressure because the amount of air pressure that is on you right now is actually quite impressive. Um, Anyway, so the idea of a vacuum that you really have nothing uh, in the nothing is when everything's happening. Keep that in mind. And remember, inside an atom is more emptiness than out there. But in that emptiness is where everything is really happening, because that's where the quantum potential is. Um, and once we all realize that, that's when everything fun can happen. That's where giggles and jiggles will take you. All right. Um, and so before I forget, so the lab for this week is all calculations on solids. The lab for next week. So I open the folder um, and it is gas laws. There are eight activities. You pick three of them. You can do any three. One of them is just doing calculations. So if you want to do so, each one's worth five points. Um, half of them are seven day challenges. So if you want to do all seven day challenges, you can. There is one where you get to play a song for me. So Damon, that's there for you. So you can record it and or you can play it for the class. You can sing. I had several people last year who recorded a song. Um, you know, you can play a musical instrument. I had some, a couple of people last year played musical inf instruments. Actually, some people blew me away. I didn't know how talented they were. So you can play it for the class. There was somebody who did that, but most people record it and um, just upload it and send me the link. Um, so that is one of the choices. You can do art. You can bake bread um, because bread is all about gas laws. Um, but several of them are seven day challenges. So I'm including meditation, the giggle jiggling. So some of the ones that you've seen before. So I would recommend that you look at it. You can look at it right now if you're bored. Um, so if you want to do some of the seven days that you can get started on them. And um, then I forgot to put this. This is every day when I'm in my meditation, I'm like, oh, yeah, I have to add that to the lab. And then I, I go into my bliss place and I totally forget about it. If you want to keep going for 30 days, like with your giggles and jiggles and meditation and stuff, that's that's where the bonus will happen at the end of 30 days. But you have to do something, three things for three things in there. Um, all right. So we're going to walk through the laws. Uh, so this is Boyle like greatest wig or hairdo. I have no idea if that's his hair or wig, um, but he's considered one of the fathers or grandfathers or great grandfathers of chemistry. Um, and he studied gases. All these guys are. The original chemists all looked at gases because you could, they had rules and they discovered what the rules were. So what Boyle did is he he was doing this with water. And so his his lab was like four stories um, because uh, mercury goes 760 millimeters. But water, when you do it, it goes up like four floors with the air pressure. So he looked at the relationship of pressure and volume. And. So this is how our bike pumps work. This is how our lungs work. This is why our ears pop when we go to higher elevations. It's how an airbag works. So if you increase the pressure, which means that would happen when you decrease the volume. So if you have less space, there's less space, then you're gonna have more collisions. I wrote that backwards. 
I had a student one year who asked me if English was my first language because I don't know if you've noticed I do that a lot. I write, I start in the right and go to the left. I, I have yet to figure out why I do that. Um, so I, I grew up in this country. Um, yeah, and so I do the demos online, but this is basically the idea. In Europe, they do not call it Boyle's Law. They call it Marriott's Law because Boyle forgot to say something. And that was, you have to assume temperature is constant. So T and N are constant. So you will see this on many problems, and sometimes I don't write it, but if you see this assumption, that just means, okay, great. Um, sometimes I don't write it and sometimes I do, but because he forgot to say that, because if you change the temperature, you change the giggles, that is going to change the collision. So we're looking at just two variables at a time. So Marriott said, you have to say this. And so they all call it Marriott's law. So the relationship is that if you have a pressure times volume, you will always get, and then you change the pressure you're going to change the volume. So P1 times V1 will equal P2 times V2. Um, so that's what his law is. You don't, it all is in the, in the gas law when we get there. And so I'll show you, but we're going to work with that right now doing. So how you want to do these problems, my recommendation, read through the problem you can highlight. So we have 2.5 liters and we have this pressure and then Tor. So again, the units, are the key that tells you. So if you want, you can label above it. So this is my V1. This is my P1. This is my P2. And what we're trying to find is V2. So if you want, you can label as you're going along like that. And about half of you that will work for. Some of you, what will work better is to make a list. So you'll say I have 2.5 liters. That's my V1. I have 5.0 ATMs, that's my P1 because they go together. And then 745 TOR is my P2, and what I'm solving for is my V2. All right, I'm still writing backwards and I don't know why. Um, so when you write it out like this, the variables tell you what law and the page is titled Boyle's Law. So we're gonna use Boyle's Law. So P1, you always state the formula. It's just like every page here. Always show the formula. If you don't show the formula, you're going to lose 200 points. Every time you don't show the formula, I'm going to take off 200 points. All right. So we can see who can have the greatest negative grade here. You know what's great, Major? You're like smiling. But back in 104, when I would say that, you would go, oh, my God, is she really going to take off 200 points? And... There's probably somebody here who's thinking she's she's serious. I I am serious because you have to state the formula and then you plug in. So this is where the math department I'm videotaping. They would come and tell me I'm teaching it wrong, so I'm going to teach it right just for them. I don't care though. I mean, first segue. If you would like to plug it in, plug in the numbers and then rearrange, I'm okay with that. I need to see the formula. I need to see it plugged in. I need to see the answer. However, the math department has politely told me that I do this wrong, that you must first rearrange before you can plug in the numbers. So if you would like to be politically, mathematically correct, you get the same answer. Um, so we're solving for V2. For those of you, which is all of you, who hit puberty when you learned algebra, and so your algebra skills are not up to par, because puberty got in the way. They should, teach, they should teach algebra in first grade so that we don't have to deal with hormones. Um, you just highlight or circle the variable we're looking for, which is V2. That variable has to be isolated by itself. So we're gonna divide by P2, and then I would plug in with units, so 2.5 liters, 5.0 ATMs. Um, so we're gonna run into a problem. Does anybody see my problem? Unit. My units don't cancel. So I have to have the ATMs and the TORs cancel. Um, you, We're going to do it in this problem. Uh, it doesn't matter to me which one you change, but I'm going to change the TORs. There are 760 TOR to one ATM. 
that was that I showed that on the previous page. So basically, I take the 745 and divide by the 760 in your problem, and you would punch it in, and you would get 13 liters. We are going to respect two sig figs. So we're doing math again. We're going to respect sig figs. If you're ever in doubt, it's really easy. They all, all the numbers had two. So you are going to often be asked this question. The math gets you a number. This question is the key. You're going to have to tell me, does the answer make sense? And you're going to explain to me why. And we're going to do it really simply. So what happened? This pressure is less than one ATM. I can look at the number without doing the math and know that because 760 is one ATM and this is less than 760. So I decrease the pressure greatly, which means I have fewer collisions. Whenever you talk about pressure, you're either going to have more or less collisions. And so my volume must have increased, which it did. It went from 2.5 to 13. Um, and so we have much greater pressure or volume. So there's fewer collisions because there's more space. This is like, so Damon has told me how small his house is. And so he's probably always bumping in stuff. My house is small too. And so you suddenly move into a castle. And I I would still bump into things because there'd be ghosts in the castle and stuff. But um, you have more space. You don't bump into each other. That's actually right. Like right now, we have to give each other the space so we don't run into each other as much. That's all I'm looking for when I say to explain at the molecular level. Fewer collisions, more space. Because the giggles did not change. Nothing else changed. All right. Uh, when you go diving, when you go in the ocean, the pressure increases greatly. And so you're getting all this pressure on you. Um, I guess that's what that picture is about. All right, we're going to move on to Charles' law. That's Boyle's law. You don't need to memorize laws or anything like that. Um, well, you have to memorize anything because we're online. So Charles uh, was really into hot air ballooning because it was 1700s. And he looked at the relationship of temperature and volume. And that's what this cute little picture shows. So as you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the giggles or kinetic energy or jiggles. So if you have more giggles uh, and pressure is constant, so there's no more collisions. So that's a huge assumption. There's no more change in pressure. If you have more giggles, you have more kinetic energy you must take up more space. So you need more space. Um, that would be our explanation there. And so normally this is where I do a really cool demo with liquid nitrogen. You put a balloon in liquid nitrogen, it just shrivels up. Um, and I didn't, and so it took a while. Um, one of the choices you guys have for your lab is you can videotape yourself doing a demo. And so there's some cool ones you can actually do. Um, so I tried doing it with dry ice. It, it eventually worked, but there are some fun ones you can do yourself and you just videotape it. Um, all right, so we have um, our V1 is 0 0.50 liters. And our temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. And we want what's the new volume at our temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. Now, if you're like going a step ahead, we have to write the formula first. Um, there is something we have to do before we're going to be able to solve this besides me giving you the formula. And that is. <laughs> What major? You cannot use Celsius. I don't know if that's what you said. You can only yes, use. Can go to Kelvin. You have to see. He learned something from me in Chem 104 two years ago. Did you really just say that? Your name's already up there, though. Um, I'm I'm yeah. like really impressed. That's because he got he probably got it wrong on a test and was like kicking himself for two years. Gas laws only work in Kelvin. Temperatures are measured in Celsius, and then you have to change it. So we're going to add 273. So this is 293 Kelvin, and here we add 273. 273 is not an exact number. 
Um, but we're just going to go with 273. So this is 310 Kelvin. All right. That is really important that you must always change the Kelvin. You can write that in like big red letters. Um, let's do our gas law though. So with Boyle's law, where I wrote it. Um, these guys had an inverse relationship. When one went up, the other went down. Sorry. So if pressure goes up, volume goes down. They're always an opposite relationship. And so we multiply in P1 times V1. This one is the exact opposite. They have um, one goes up, the other one goes up. So it's a ratio. P1. Oh, we're not doing pressure. Sorry. Uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So it's a ratio. Now, before we write it down here, because we're going to always show our formulas, we don't lose 220 points. It's going up. Um, oh, no, we're going to write. So we're going to state the formula. Sorry. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. We're solving for V2, so we rearrange by multiplying by T2. And rather than having, we're going to go through several formulas here, and rather than having all these separate formulas, I'm going to show you one way that combines them all, and you can get everything from there. We're just walking through to get to there. Um, so we would plug in. So just be careful. What I see is students will make their list or label everything, they'll rearrange, and then they plug in like random numbers. T2 is going first, which is the 310. So 310 Kelvin. Uh, 0 0.5 liters and 293 Kelvin. And we punch it in and it's only a small change, but it did change. So, in Celsius, it looks like we doubled the temperature. So we think we should see a doubling of the volume. But when you change the Kelvin, it's actually only a very small change in Kelvin. And so our volume did change only a small amount. Something to consider. Um, so as we, our temperature sure. increased, go ahead. Sorry, if, so we're, if we're looking for volume two, can we divide it by by the temperature too? You divide it by again. T1. I didn't understand the question. Uh, if you're if we're solving for V2, should we divide by T2? So it would be T1, no, T1 you, over you T2. Had, we had to rearrange. So when I rearrange to solve for V2, the T2 moves to the numerator. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we increase the temperature, which means we increase the kinetic energy or the giggles, so it takes up more space. And again, that's assuming constant P and N. All right, and then this guy, Gay Luzak, um, at the same time, he looked at the relationship of temperature and pressure. Um, and so this is a really cool one, which is where I can get an egg into, I, and I do in the video, it's worth watching because I struggled for two hours to get this to work. But Major may remember when I would do this with liquid nitrogen, I get the egg into the container. So maybe, maybe not. All right, you should get a standing ovation for the demos. Um, so on this one, if what well, we can do, what would happen here with the liquid nitrogen, if you decrease the temperature, so everything's moving slower. So everything's moving slower movements. So it'd be like you guys, if you started moving really slowly, you're going to, and you're still in the same space, but everything slows down. You don't collide with things because you kind of, can see everything. So you decrease, there's going to be fewer collisions. Or if you want, you can increase the temperature and that's going to increase the pressure. Um, and so there's actually a really cool, you can Google it. Um, 
there's like train cars that will completely collapse. So during the daytime, it would be an empty box car um, in the, and it would be in the desert. And so during the daytime, the temperature gets really hot and all the molecules in there start moving super fast, super fast, super fast. Uh, and so several, it, it evacuates. So the, the car is empty of air because it got so hot in there, all the air gets pushed out from the high pressure in there. So when the temperature went up, they had so much kinetic energy that it pushes all the molecules out. And then at night, the temperature drops so much in the desert and there's no air inside the boxcar. And so the air pressure on the outside just, and the whole thing collapses. And so there's some pretty cool pictures. There's actually a really cool demo you can do at home if you have a can um, and ice cubes and a stove. Um, so if you want to try it, I do it in the video. All right. So we have four liters is our volume uh, and we're at STP. So STP means we have a temperature of zero Celsius or 273 Kelvin and we have a pressure of one ATM or 760 millimeters of mercury. So realize that's what STP is. So whenever I tell you STP, I'm giving you a temperature and pressure. And then we move to a new temperature. So our T2 is 45 degrees, and it wants to know what is P2. There is no mention of a volume change, so we're going to ignore that. Um, so we need our formula. This is a direct relationship, just like this was a direct relationship. So we can write this the same way, this time with the P's over T equals P over T. So we'll state our formula down here, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So state your formula or you'll lose 222 points now. We go with twos, duality rules. Three twos isn't really duality though. Um, before we can start, what's the other thing we have to do? Convert to Calvin's. Thank you. Was that Michael? Yeah. He answered me twice now. This is exciting. All right, 273, which is, so this is 318. Yeah, Kelvin. All right. Um, so again, you can rearrange first or do it with a green pen. We're solving for P2. So circle the variable you want, it has to be by itself. So that means the T2 has to end up up here. So we'll start with the 318 Kelvin uh, times the P1, one ATM, and divide by the T1, which is the 273. You can also cross off as you use pieces so that you make sure like lightly cross them off and you should get this answer, the 1.16. I will slow down if on the next page, you guys can punch stuff in your calculator. This is all just, um, so does it make sense? We increase the temperature. So we increase the, there's increase the movement. So everything's moving faster. There's more chaos, however you want to say it. So you're increasing the temperature. And so it's all, volume is constant. So it's all in the same space. So you're going to have more collisions. So if you start moving faster and you're limited to the same space, something's going to happen, uh, which is a collision. And that is the measurement of pressure. So when you when you take physics, you learn the technical definition of pressure, which is force per area, um, which is nice. It means how many collisions are happening at that moment. Yeah, I just noticed that the, yeah, so I just noticed that the volume is constant and the pressure is constant when it's not used. Do we have to mention it every time when we're asking for Does your answer make sense? Do we have to mention um, it every constant? When you're in your explanation, it sometimes helps students to recognize 
because if three thing if two things change, then it becomes a little bit harder to explain. Usually, I have to look at what the bigger change was. So it is valuable to say that the volume didn't change, and so because the volume was constant, the pressure would change. It just helps. That's what the explanations are to make I'll sure just, you've got. I'm just I was just scared that if I forget it one time, I'll just get my gone now. But oh no, you, you would. I would probably only take off 111 points if you forgot. So, all right. Avogadro's law. Yes, he's like my best friend right now with my mole. Yeah, I should name my mole. We should have a contest. Maybe I'll send an email out to name the mole in my backyard. Um, can ponder that. I mean, Avogadro would just be too obvious. All right. So this. This demo, this is not going to get you the five points. You'd have to do something fun with it. But you've all blown up a balloon. So as you blow the, the carbon dioxide and oxygen from your breath into there, as you increase the number of particles, moles, um, increase the particles, you're, of course, going to increase the volume. And then back to what Major just asked. We are assuming um, pressure and temperature are constant. So he was asking, do you have to always state that? Um, it is helpful because that is an important assumption. But again, sometimes we forget to, especially like if you're taking the celebration and you're so excited and you're just giggling and jiggling and you forget because you're taking the celebration. Um, so there's always forgiveness. Everything's always forgiven. All right, so we have 3.14159. You guys missed that number? First time this term we've seen that number. So three pi grams of helium, uh, and it's in 789 milliliters. Um, so this is our volume, and it wants to know how many atoms would occupy 1.618 liters. So we're going to do it by gas laws, which if these guys have a direct relationship, we are going to have N1 over V1 equals N2 over V2. So N is moles. So we have to go to moles to solve this. To rearrange, right, we'd move the volume V2 over here. So we'll have 1.618 liters, uh, 3.14, sorry, 159 grams. Uh, and you guys remember how to change grams to moles? Periodic table, you find helium, you got 4.0026 grams to one mole. All right, that's on top, and on the bottom, we would put our other volume. So this was an issue earlier. This is in milliliters. This is in liters. The units have to match. So you have to change your milliliters to liters, 10 to negative 3 liters. Then you're going to punch it in. That's going to give you N2. And then you guys know how to do that. You would multiply one mole by Avogadro's number. And that would give you your 9.69E23 atoms. Questions? So... The point of this one is if I give you a mass, I tell you what it is from the periodic table, you can change mass to moles. So mass is not going to show up in any of these, but we can change mass to moles. Also, if you're given atoms, that's technically not in here, but we can use Avogadro's number to change it to moles. Um, so the answer, this one's a hard one to say if it makes sense. But we can do it. So our our beginning moles was less than one because 
that was less than its molar mass. And we increased the volume. So we must have more moles. Um, and so our final answer is greater than Avogadro's number. So N2 is greater than Avogadro's number. Um, you can ponder that explanation there. So again, our initial moles was less than the periodic table number. So it was less than one. And our final one is bigger than Avogadro's number. So it must be greater than one. Um, that This one I wouldn't ask you, probably would not ask you to explain why. But it does. The teacher gave you the answer. All right. So where all this is going is we can combine all of those. You just from this, you can get all this that we we did. Um, so if you just want Boyle's law, you can cover up the bottom part. So P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. If you're just looking at volume and temperature, just cover up the P and N. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So all of the gas laws are in there. What we're going to do, let me give you a few moments to try it, is we're going to actually use more than two variables. So let's go through this first one together. We have 8.65 liters. So that's a volume. So we'll write B1. We have a pressure. And this all goes together because it says of or at. It's those prepositions. So our pressure is 1.15 atms and 35 degrees celsius so those are um, our first set of variables it doesn't matter if you call them the ones or twos it's just that those three go together all right and then it wants to know what is the new volume so v2 is our question mark and we have a new pressure um, and we have a new temperature. So we're going to use this formula, but we can leave N out because the N did not change. So kind of back to what Major is asking, I and I, I mentioned this, I don't always say, hey, N is constant, but there's no change in mass or moles. So we just leave N out. So we're going to do P1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2. So to solve it, you're going to have to do a few things. I'm going to pause and give you guys a chance to solve it. Um, but I'm going to ask you, what are some of the things you need to do to solve? Convert the Celsius to Kelvin and you have to change Celsius to Kelvin and go ahead and the pressure yeah the pressure I like to always go to ATM so when I did it before I do it within the problem you can also convert over here and find the number and then plug in that's kind of a preference thing and so I see half the students are okay solving within the problem and some people like to convert over here in their list um, and then rearrange and plug in and then go ahead and look at your list, make your list for number six, or you can take a brief break. I'm going to pause this. All right, I'm going to start recording and go through this. You can keep solving if you've got the hang of it, but I want to answer a question that Major asked me, for those of you watching at home. Um, there is in the folder for this week, you guys have the math for the solids lab, which is just a whole bunch of math, four pages of it. And I'll be there Saturday morning. Um, so if you have questions and um, if, again, like previous weeks for this one, if you submit it like Sunday by by six or seven before I go to sleep, I, I will look at it and I'll give you a grade and I'll just mark the ones that you missed and write comments so you can you can have the chance to resubmit um, by midnight or by one in the morning, whatever. But there is also another thing that says extra credit. It's extra credit. Um, it's like 10 points if you do all of it. Um, and so they're different. Um, 
it's something I used to do with the kids. And so you can actually, with mini marshmallows, you have to go buy a bag of mini marshmallows, which costs a buck. And then you can take spaghetti, not cooked, and you break it into pieces. and Or you can use toothpicks because some people get pressured with the spaghetti. Uh, and you make a BCC or an FCC cell with the marshmallows. You need something that holds them together. So this would be great for you, Damon, with your nephews. Um, and then you make the sacred geometries or that um, Plato had. So they're given there. And then if you want, you try and make a buckyball. I think those are three. Oh, and then there's fractals. Um, so you can try doing the fractal one too. So those are all there. There was also, um, hopefully I remember this next week, on the lab from like two weeks ago, if you wanted to, to watch a video. Again, the weather has not been playing nice for me. Tomorrow it's going to rain, hopefully. My garden would be very happy. But if you want to watch one of those videos, um, and then just, I guess you can email me and I'll add some points, um, what you thought of the video, what you learned, what you thought of it. Um, yeah, there's going to be, there's going to be one other. Oh, I, I think on the gas law lab, you have to do three activities. If you want, you can do a fourth one. You don't get five, four points, but if you want to do four of them for extra credit, you can do that too. So I had a gal last year, there were three people who did all the extra credits. And so some of you, you've done like, are doing phenomenal um, and made a difference in their grade. So if you're somebody who's borderline or have, you're not happy with your grade, do the extra credit because um, at the end of the term, it's June and we're all done. You're not going to then be like, can I go back and do all this extra credit? So um, you do it tomorrow. It's a rainy day or this weekend because the weather just keeps getting nicer. All right. So we are solving for V2. It really does help circle the variable you're solving for. And then you're basically cross multiplying. So the T2 is going to move up and the P2 is going to move down. You, you can't do where you're multiplying a temperature times a temperature. So if T1's on the bottom, then when we re rearrange, the variable you're solving for has to end up by itself in the numerator. That's key. All right, and then take a moment to carefully plug in. So we have to add our 273, which this is gonna be what, 298 Kelvin, and this will be 308 Kelvin. Um, so T2 is 298. Our P1 is 1.15. You can cross things out as you use them if that helps you. And then the 8.65 liters. You do need the units because the units are going to tell you if everything is going to cancel out. And then we put P2 in the denominator and... Again, you can change it to ATMs over in your list. Like you can do it here. Uh, one ATM, 760 millimeters mercury. Um, or you can do it here that you're basically dividing that number by 760. And then we need our T1, which is our 308 Kelvin. And you plug them in and it will get us this number. Now, explaining if this makes sense is a little bit harder. So our pressure, 655 is less than one ATM, it's less than 760. So we decrease the pressure and we also decrease the temperature. So normally when you decrease the pressure, that's going to increase the volume, right? Because there's fewer collisions that must mean the volume is greater. If you decrease the temperature though, pure jiggles, you would normally see a decrease in volume. So we have counteracting predictions here. So how do we decide which one must be right? I mean, do we go based on our answer? You can also go based on how big a change it was. Um, this temperature change is pretty small in Kelvin. So the volume change is the larger one. And so that would be why. So it, it's going to be that pressure um, because the temperature change is minor, is small. 
Um, so this decrease in pressure made our volume go up. So there were fewer collisions. So it must be taking up because there's more space for them. All right, on the next one, we're going to solve for temperature. Now, this one's a little bit different because, and you can do this. So I gave you time, you could have tried it. Um, but I asked the question at the beginning. So on all the other problems we've done, the first five, I gave you information and then I asked the question. Um, if I ask the question at the beginning, you can make that your T1 as your unknown. It doesn't matter if T1 or T2 is your unknown. And it says the temperature and we have 5.75 meters cubed. That is a volume, cubic meters. We don't have to convert, not yet, because my other volume is in cubic meters. So just leave it in cubic meters. They're going to cancel out. Um, so it just gives us the temperature. And then it says our new volume, V2, is 2.68 meters cubed. And my new temperature is 27. And just get in the habit that you see that, that you add your 273. So this is 300 Kelvin. So just always change your temperatures. The volume here, as long as the two are the same, they're fine. So the formula we would normally want, we're going to ignore pressure in moles. So we would have V1 over T1, right? Because you're always showing your formula. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Um, all right. So we're going to do something different, though, because there's going to be a problem that is going to happen to you. The variable you are solving for. Just drop everything is T1. And the issue we have, I said to isolate it, to isolate it in the numerator, and that's in the denominator. So what we're going to do first is rewrite this formula. And it's called, it's actually a law in math. Math has lots of laws because they just work with numbers, right? Um, and so this is applied math is what we're doing, is it's called the law of inversion. And this works great when you're working with ratios. The ratio holds true as long as you, if you flip it, as long as you flip both sides. So actually, our formula is T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. This will save you a headache. Um, so if you are solving for temperature, which we are here, you want temperature in the numerator. And then you can simply, we're solving for T1, we're going to move V1 over here on the top. Otherwise, you're going to end up solving for 1 over T1. I've done this enough to know what students do. Um, I mean, there might be one of you in here who has the math skills that you would catch that, and uh, you will all have the math skills. But it's more how you're thinking when you're doing problem solving. And we just get into this mode, and you solve for 1 over T1. You get this really weird little itty-bitty number because you're solving for the the inverse of it and you're like it doesn't make sense why not all right let's plug in so we have 300 kelvin um v1 so 5.75 and 2.68 and we would punch it in there's my calculator So we get like 644, and that's Kelvin. So you would subtract the 273, and we get back to degrees Celsius. So I would always say how, how my brain remembers it is in the alphabet, if I'm going forward from Celsius to Kelvin, I add the 273, and now I'm going backwards in the alphabet. So I subtract it. That's the only way my brain can comprehend it. Um, the answer makes sense because we decrease the volume. We cut it in half pretty much. So there's less space. Um, now the pressure didn't change, so P and N are constant. And again, kind of back to your question major, I like to write it because it helps to explain. We're only looking at two variables here. 
Um, and so if there's less space, that must mean that there's going to be our temperature. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at it from the wrong place. Um, we're going this way this time because we're going to the ones. You could have done it that way, too. So we doubled the volume. So we have more space. Um, but they're not colliding anymore. The collisions are the same. And so if the collisions are the same in more space, then they must have a greater temperature or greater giggles. They're giggling more because they have more space and they don't collide because they're just happy because there's more space. Gases love space. We all love space. Love open space so we can do things. We can giggle more and jiggle. All right. Going to move on. Four pages down. Is this something I'm going to miss when I go back to class? We're going to go back because the electronics are like shutting down on me. So I I have just decided I'm going to manifest this because nobody else is. Um, but yeah, all the big schools are going back. So our little school can go back. So somebody said, what if we take this? Put them in the classroom. I just throw the papers around when I'm done with them. Um, I have to share my classroom, which I don't have to right now. But you could just take this, and it's always going to equal a constant, which is R. If you have all four sets of variables, R is called the gas law constant. I do not actually know who came up with it um, and call, why they call it R, maybe for air. Who knows? But if you rearrange it, then you get PIVNERT, PV equals NRT. That's what a lot of people call it. Um, and from this, we can do... If you can do anything from PV equals NRT. This is called the ideal gas law. Um, and R that we are going to use at this point in the term is this number. There are many different R's. They are always a gas law constant. And the reason there are many different R's is because it depends on the units. So that's why this is there. That little comment that I keep writing on the top of every worksheet that says respect units in sig figs, it's all in the units. So if you're using R, which we're going to use for these last problems we're going to solve today, um, you have to be in ATMs and you have to be in liters. When you use R, you must have. So you must be in ATMs and liters. The moles in K, that's a give me. We always solve in moles in K because that's how gas laws work. Um, when do we use it? Uh, we're going to go through that. So when you don't have two variables. Um, so you only have one of each variable. Does that make sense? So if you go back and look at all the problems we just did, there was always two. There was two volumes. There were two temperatures. There were two pressures. We're going to now only have one variable, one pressure, one volume. Um, and the assumptions are, anybody remember the assumptions? I stated them at the very beginning. That there are no IMFs. If there were IMFs, the kinetic energy, right, they're, they'd be getting stuck to each other. Um, and so we're assuming that there's no IMFs. And we're also assuming that the atoms occupy no space. So the size of the atom, the atom size doesn't matter. You know, that doesn't really influence how we solve, but it it's Van der Waal. Remember Van der Waal? He, he actually said, what if there are IMFs, which there are, um, and he came up with a more elaborate equation. So all we're given here is we have two grams and this chlorine and we're at STP and it's like, what the heck do I do with that? We're going to make a list. It is chlorine. Gases are diatomics. So make a note to yourself. 
Oxygen is O2. Hydrogen is H2. Chlorine is Cl2. And we know we have, so we have 0 0.200 grams. So we're going to need that to get to moles. So that's going to be my N, changing that, the grams. Uh, STP is the other piece we know. What is STP? 1 ATM. 1 ATM. And 273 Kelvin. Yeah. So this is at zero Celsius, which he, Damon's absolutely correct. It's 273 Kelvin. So that is STP, our temperatures. We have a temperature. We have a pressure. We, we only have one of anything. PV equals NRT. State your formula. My gosh, I forgot to say that on this problem. <laughs> state your formula. Always state your formula. PV equals NRT if you only have one of everything. And we're solving for volume. So this is more for all of you smarty pants in the class, meaning those of you who are like in differential equations, you're like, I've taken 29 years of math and I, this is just algebra. Um, you end up being the ones who mess this up. Uh, it is the students who are very careful. And what it is, is you decide you're so smart, you can rearrange everything in your head. And then you end up writing P divided by NRT equals V. And that is not going to be correct. So state the formula, rearrange it, and plug in. Um, just do it because you don't want to. You you want to get all the gas law ones right because they're just plugging into the formula. Um, so we're going to divide by the p and rt over p equals our volume, and then I'm going to set it in one setup. So we'll start with our grams. This is of chlorine, and we need to get to moles. So handy dandy periodic table. Um, we have to double that number, right? Because there's two of them. So somewhere around 70.9 grams and one mole on top. So you're going to divide by the 70.9. So that's our N. I'm going to write R out this time because it's our first time using it. But you can just write R, but we're going to use the 0 0.082057. Um, just a quick comment. When you take physics, you use pascals, kilopascals. So the R you're going to use is going to be different. So it just depends on the unit of pressure. But um, there's a reason they use pascals because it's more useful for what they do. We're going to use ATM. So. Um, and you write your units, ATM liter per mole K. I want to show the units to show you how everything cancels out. So that's R. And then the temperature was 273 Kelvin. And pressure is just one ATM. Now we still want to show that because we want to show how our units are going to cancel. So my grams cancel. My ATMs will cancel up there, my mole will cancel that, my K will cancel that, and I'll be left with liters. So I I can, it, you'll get 0.0632 liters, which is fine. I just changed it to milliliters. I don't know why. Now, since we're not comparing variables, we can't, I can't ask you, does the answer make sense? Because, sure. Um, gases take up a lot of space, but even though this is a really small mass, take up a lot of space. So sure, makes sense. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to pause again and give you, you can take a, a few minute break or you can try this one. And then if you want, you can at least list your variables. If nothing else, list your variables. Um, and I'll go through these two and then we, we have to do density because, yeah, we have a couple more. All right, you can keep solving if you're on a roll or I'm going to go through this. So it wants to know how many molecules. Since we're going to use the Avogadro's number, every mole's favorite number. Um, so we have 2.25 liters. So that's our volume. 
you can say V1 and then we're at 37 Celsius. So that's our temperature. Uh, and then we're at a pressure of 735 Tor. And that's it. We don't have two things of anything. So we're just going to do PV equals NRT. If you're solving for molecules, which variable are we solving for? N. N. Which is going to be moles, and then we'll bring in Avogadro's number. So we have N, we'll divide by RT. And so you can again solve, change your TOR over here. So an abbreviation for TOR, I don't think I said it, it's just the little t. So you can abbreviate it by that. And then you'll divide 760, 1 ATM over 760 TOR. Um, volume is 2.25 liters. So you have to be an ATM in liters. You can just write R, or you can write the whole number out with the units. Um, so kind of like what we do with Avogadro's number. And then our temperature is 310 Kelvin. So you have to change your temperature. So make sure you divide by both of these numbers, the 0 0.082057 and the 310. So when there's two things, and I forgot to mention that on the other pages, um, sometimes when people go and punch these in at home, they don't get the same thing. You have to make sure you have a extra parentheses around the whole denominator. Um, so you divide by all of that. All right. Um, this will give you moles. And then if you want, you can do it in one step, but this will give you moles, which I don't know what the number is. Um, or you can just say, well, I'm going to take this number, which is moles, and this is going to be one mole and then Avogadro's number of molecules. So for those of you, there's always some people who like to do it all in one setup. Um, that would be a way you could do it all in one setup. So you wouldn't need that equal sign anymore. And that should give you your number up there. Um, so again, you get some moles, PV over RT is moles, and then Avogadro's number. It's just another one of those things. We can use pressure to change to it. All right. So our airbags have sodium azide. Um, you guys had a problem last term about sodium azide. So you have 25 liters, 1,000 millimeters of mercury, and 22 degrees Celsius. Um, so this is a volume. This is a pressure. This is a temperature. So we're going to be doing PV equals NRT. Um, yeah, we'll just do it here. PV equals NRT. So we have pressure, volume, temperature. So N is what we're solving for. You can do this all in one setup. We're, we're going to have two steps. Now, I will break it into two steps. Um, but you can keep going with it. So we're solving for N. So we're going to divide by the RT. So our pressure is the 1,000. Um, millimeters of mercury and like what some students do is they'll just divide by the 760 and then say okay this is my ATMs. Um, volume 25 liters and then my temperature oh a quick comment about sig figs because um, somebody will say well we had only two sig figs was our least number with the 22 celsius why is the answer have three? Because in gas laws, you always change it to three sig figs when you add the 273. So, um, yeah, and R. Doesn't matter. They're both on the bottom. So R and T are down there. And we'll punch that in and get a number. but we're not done. Really? Somebody else get 7.85? Oh, I know why I got the wrong answer. Sorry. 
Let's try that again. 1.36. That's what I got. Yeah, 1.36. That actually sounds right. And that would be moles. Gas laws only work for gases. In a balanced equation, remember states of matter, solid, liquid, gas? This is a gas. So this is moles of nitrogen. This is not moles of sodium azide. Sodium azide is a solid. Solids don't obey gas laws because they don't have giggles and jiggles. So how can we change these moles of nitrogen to grams of sodium azide? Mole to mole. Yeah, stoichiometry, mole to mole. I think that was Christian who said that. You're already on the board. But if there's somebody else, let me know. All right. Um, all right, one point. Max, you're not on the board. That's unusual. Maybe I'm just ignoring you. You told me you weren't going to be a good student tonight. So, all right. Uh, so label nitrogen. We're going to sodium azide. So you guys remember this: three moles of nitrogen to two moles of sodium azide, and then one mole is how many grams of the sodium azide. So we're at 14. It's 58, 65. I was close. Um, yeah, so two steps. So balance equation, there's usually two steps. Either you're going to first start with a solid and change it to the gas. Now, one of the things to realize is gas laws do not work with mass. So if I started you with the solid, you only want to get to moles because once you're at moles, PV equals NRT, the N is moles. Um, and then here we should get the 58.9 grams. All right. So that's using stoichiometry. It's like chemistry. Hooray. All right. We're almost done. One more formula that I need to show you how to use because um, it is on your study set. So your study set, I think it's like eight or 10 questions and they're just these. So just state, make your list, state your formula and you solve. So there's only three formulas that I use and that is the P1, V1 over T1 equals, oops, P2, V2 over T2. And we can throw in the N there because that sometimes shows up, the N1 and the N2. And so this was, if you have two variables. So this was on two pages ago. We had PV equals NRT. That was when we had, this is when nothing else works, is actually when we're gonna do PV equals NRT. This is my good friend, Dr. Captain Dr. Russell. So he wants to be, he's a fan of Captain Kirk. So we started calling him that. Anyway, he showed me this one, and this is better than the one I used to use or that Khan Academy uses. So it's PM dirt. Um, so we have to go through the R, T, the P, the R, and T we know. The D is for density. And that is grams per liter. Gases are not dense at all. That's why you walk through the air and you don't fill it. So there's a lot of space, so it's grams per liter. And the M is grams per mole. So it is molar mass. So I mentioned that because there's a lot of M's in chemistry. So that's the only thing. So some students write it as PMM dirt. Um, so PMM equals DRT. You use this. When do you use it? If the question asks for M or D, because it's right there to solve for it. So like this question, what is the density? We're going to do PM equals DRT. Or this one, what is the molar mass? We're going to use PM equals DRT because it's right there. It's in there. Um, there's other formulas that people use. They're just more convoluted. And this one was it's been so nice and clean. So I just have used it for 23 years. All right. So let's make our list. It's carbon tetrachloride. What does tetra mean? Four. So carbon and then Cl4. And we have 714 tor. 
which is our pressure, and 125 Celsius, which is our temperature. So we had to add the 273. Just get in the habit of changing it right off. So 398 Kelvin. We're going to use this because, again, it asks for density. And we're going to solve for the D, for the density. So our final formula is going to be PM over the RT equals density. So we're going to divide by the RT. And then we're just going to plug in. So um, 714 Tor divided by 760, that's our ATMs. So we have to get to ATMs. Our molar mass, how do we figure out M? We have a periodic table. So we add up the carbon and the four chlorines. I just know how to do that. So you can do it faster than your teacher, right? So around 154 or 153.8 grams per mole. I'm going to actually show units with the R this time because I want to show you how they cancel out because somebody always asks. So 0 0.082057 ATM meters mole K. And then our temperature is 398 Kelvin. So I sure hope on the study set I put all the answers on there. So when you do it, you'll know you have it. Um, so ATMs here canceled. Kelvin cancels. The mole cancels that mole. And so we'll be left with grams over liters. Um, and so hopefully you get my answer, the 4.43 grams per liter. Questions with that. So units are important. Make sure you always show units. So next one, if it just asks you point blank, what's the molar mass? Um, so M is what we're solving for. So we're going to divide by the P. So state the original formula and then rearrange. And again, you can make a list. The list is really nice. Um, you can also just underline your pieces. So density is mass per volume. So my density is going to be the 4.40 grams over the 3.50 liters. Then we just have R. And then our temperature So 314 Kelvin. And then, so some students like to, yeah, so the 560 millimeters mercury, you can do it. Um, you have to change the millimeters to ATMs. Why do you have to change the millimeters mercury to ATMs? So the R is uh, R formula won't work without it. That's awesome. Like heard like four different versions of the exact same answer and you were all absolutely right. R has to be it's if we're using this R 0 0.082057 uh, the units and we'd punch in and we would get that. Um, so that's it. When on so on Tuesday, these are notes. We'll finish this page. And so the second study set for the week is a lot of going through and then we'll just do more practice um, with gas laws. And then next Thursday, we do a practice for the celebration, which is in two weeks. So your lab this week is a big lab. It's a lot of math. It's just math, but um, it's a solid stuff. You guys have a worksheet do tonight so I'll hang out if you have questions on it um, it's just three problems question number three um, actually let me give you a hint for question number three on the worksheet so on the worksheet tonight what worksheet are we on seven 
um, on number three, it talks about cesium chloride. And the key is, is that the cesium is in the center and the chlorides are at the corners. Um, and so the corner is one and the center is one. So when you do your math, normally we say that a BCC, there are two atoms. But in this case, it's not two. It's that you have one cesium chloride unit per unit cell. Does that make sense? Because you have one cesium, one chloride. And then there's one other piece that will help you. So you go through your math. You get down to A. So we normally do four R's equals the square root of three times A. But this time, it is still that formula because it's BCC. These four radiuses are not all the same. So you have two radiuses of cesium and two radiuses of chloride will equal your square root of three times A. So you guys can get to, to the volume. You go through all your stuff, you get to the volume, do your cube root. But when you get to this formula, this is what you're doing. You want to change to picometers. And then it just becomes, I give you chloride and you just plug in and solve for cesium. It's just the rearranging. Um, and so I think you will all get it with that hint, um, major hint for you. So yeah, any questions for me? I'm gonna stop.